I'm so thrilled to have Meika Bartels here with me. She needs no introduction because um, she's a person that's been doing such a great work. Uh, she's a researcher, she's the, she's the president of EPA, International Positive Psychology Association, and she is from uh, the Netherlands. She's Dutch. Hi, Meika. Hi. It was um, great uh, listening to you. Since I want to bring the science to more people around the world and in Brazil, I would love for you to tell me, what do you think is the next step for the positive psychology field? Yeah, well, I think positive psychology is very important. And I think all around the world, we start realizing that if you want to make the world a better place, it starts with the people. Or if you want to work on energy transition, it starts with the people. If you want to work on climate change, it starts with the people. And people need to feel well. They need to feel strong. And if they do, they can do a lot. They are resilient, they are innovative, they are creative, they can collaborate. So this field is important to see how we can actually improve well-being of individuals uh, in their context where they live. Uh, and the beauty of this field is that it's very interdisciplinary. So I study this from a genetic perspective and then someone comes in from social sciences and someone comes in from humanities. And all together we have to understand what makes people happy and how we can actually improve well-being. We uh, that are not scientists, we need um, maybe like a translator or someone <laughs> to, you know, to bring uh, those studies for us to uh, be able to use it on day to day basis. Uh, what do you recommend that it would be something that we could um, uh, be more close to science and uh, and and try to be happier? <laughs> Well, I, 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 indeed, science is very important, evidence is important. Uh, the other thing is science is slow, so we need to collaborate, we need to try things but, and then at the same time do the science, so don't wait till the evidence. You can also start doing things and then measure and see what happens. Uh, and I think the translation is a shared responsibility, also uh, from us as scientists. We shouldn't stay in our like ivory towers and do the science and just put it in a journal and say, okay, this is it. We should also step out more and say, okay, this is what we're doing, this is what it means. And then together, like we do at this conference, collaborate. So I can, un I can explain what we do and then you can ask questions and well, how can I use that? And then it should be really an, uh, a collaborative effort to, uh, and not only me as a scientist bringing, but also people that use it uh, getting it here and together we have to build this framework. Yes, and we are changing mindsets, we're changing, we are changing the world and um, the role of the science is, is so important. I'm so grateful that we have you guys. Uh, and your work is on uh, genetics. Can you tell me just a little bit about that? Because I think the genetics are so important for us to know uh, which way to go sometimes. Yeah, the most important thing is uh, what I do different than many is that most people compare groups. So groups of uh, highly educated to lower educated people and look who's happier, for example, on the average level. Or if you look at the World Happiness Report, we compare countries. I take another approach. I look at the differences between people. So why is one person happier than another person? If we specifically look at happiness, 40% of the differences in happiness between you is because you have genetic differences. 60% of the differences in happiness between you is due to the fact that you live and act in different environments. But the most important message is that we should always and everywhere realize that everybody is different. So if we really want to make the world a better place, we can't continue with all these one-size-fits-all approaches at a policy level, at, in our educational system. Everywhere we have this one-size-fits-all idea and then you don't see effects and we don't help people. So we should realize that everybody is different. So in your, also in your daily life, everybody you interact with is different than you are. At an individual level, it varies because you can have a very high genetic predisposition for well-being and I can, for example, have a low genetic predisposition. And to get back to height, you have a different genetic predisposition for height. So you have more genes that make you taller than I have. So if we would have lived in uh, less good circumstances, I might have been taller than you. You had more potential to be tall, mm -hmm. but if you like, were under fat or were ill when you were younger, you would probably stay shorter than I would have been. So it's, you have this predisposition, this vulnerability, if you talk about psychopathology, um, 
but it's in interplay with the environment creates the end product. And, and what about your person uh, possibilities to do something about your happiness? Well, you, you can do a lot about your happiness, uh, but everything, everything a human being is doing, feeling, uh, is partly driven by the genotype. And it, it, so you can, for example, go running, but voluntary exercise behavior has a very high heritability. So genes play a big role in the fact that if you are an exerciser or not. The importance that is actually showing this is that you have to be who you are. You have to stay as close to your genotype as possible. So, uh, and that's an exploration you have to do for yourself. So try things and see if you like it, if it makes you happy. If not, stop. For example, yoga is important for the well-being of some people, but not for everybody. And I know a lot of people say, yeah, I go weekly to my yoga class. Do you like it? Does it no, 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 but it's, it's good. But why do you go? If it doesn't make you happy, stop doing that. And it's easier said than done. But actually, in everything you do, you should realize, is this making me happier? Is this making me a better person? And in that sense, can I contribute to the world? So the me-search, as Tal mentioned, like we have research and we have me-search, is very important, right? And for the individual level, it's not so much about research, it's about me-search. Yeah, 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 no, the, the me-search is the most important thing and, and what we also can do is help people to do the me-search. So listen to people. Don't judge people, listen to people. And with younger children, help them in understand their emotions. Uh, and give the emotions value, both the positive emotions as the negative emotions, and help them explore, okay, this makes me happy, this makes me feel strong, this makes me feel miserable. Let them try to understand and actually explain what they feel. And, and we should do that, start really early onwards, and then we will have people that know who they are and, and then can actually give their full potential to, to the world. Oh, that's great. And one last um, question. Uh, I have this uh, possibility here to you share um, brilliant minds like your your brilliant work, and you represent IPA, you know, the Association for Positive Psychology, a worldwide uh, uh, association. Uh, how can people be more um, use more IPA with so many resources that you have? Yeah, I think the most important role for IPA is to connect people. So that's why these World Congresses are wonderful. They're also terribly expensive, so it's not doable for everybody. But if you are here, use any minute, every minute, any second to connect to other people. Build relationships, and if you start connecting, you can continue building the relationship. And in general, if you're part of IPA, never be shy. So if you see work of a researcher, drop them an email and say, hey, I like your work, uh, could you please explain what you do? Um, I, I often get the question, can I email you? And said, yeah, why not? I'm a human being and you can always contact me and maybe we can collaborate, maybe you can help me inspire me, I can inspire you. And in that sense, people together uh, can do everything. It's so good to have someone like you, uh, you know, in the leadership of this large association. Someone real, someone, w uh, yeah, a human. It's, it's, a, it's so funny to say a human person, but there are some people, you know, that are not so human. So you're doing, you're walking the talk and, and congratulations for that. And thank you for the great interview. And I hope we keep in touch and I hope to, to bring you to Brazil. Love to. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much.